riding that balance is is no small feat to to be able to entertain your audience and also just just like underneath like ask a few like a few provocative questions i want to start uh from a, the standpoint of like the acting challenge here you've got a bunch of two-handers with two great very different people and i want to talk first about dominique and what those were like because you you guys have the sort of more light-hearted relationship at the beginning before things get kind of dark. And what was it like working with her? First of all, I'm just happy that the first person we're talking about is Dominique, because I, I, I mean, I love a lot about this movie. It's just a blast to watch. My favorite part of the whole movie is Dominique. I, I, like, she, to me, she just, she gives such a heartfelt performance. You just auditioned, you, your agent brought it to you, they came to you, how did you come to the movie? Well, you know, I think, what what you learn about acting or even any career is like so many steps that are beyond that you don't even know. And I get the audition for Robin, and I was like, uh, I was looking at it, and I saw Jamie Foxx and Joseph Gordon-Levitt was already attached, and I was like, and I'm like, okay, I'm looking at this character. I feel like I can do this. I know I can do this. Could it actually be me? Could it really like all of the all of the signs, stars align and everything moves into place and it could be me. I could imagine it, but I couldn't imagine it. It was just off the tip, you know, just off the tip of my mind. And then um, going to do the the chemistry uh, the chemistry test with Jamie, like a, my third callback, uh, I was concerned because like my scene was in the trunk. It was like that emotional scene. Yeah. And I was trying to figure out, did I want to go into the room smiling and being like my dom, dom self, or do I want to make sure I'm in character so that I could readily call these tears? Like, you know, I'm in a car trying to decide what I'm going to do. And like, am I going to just be excited to see Jane? What am I going to do? And the car that I was in pulled up the same time that Jamie was pulled up. And literally, I just said, Mr. Jamie Foxx, like just yelled at him. He turned around, he said, your energy's crazy. And like, like gave me a hug. And then it was kind of like, okay, so like my 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 true self is here. My true self is always here, it's in the room, it's around. I'm in the waiting room, like, like you know, this is a big opportunity, Mr. Jamie Foxx. Like, I'm gonna, need to, I'm gonna need this to go. My heart's like beating so fast. They're laughing. So what I did was one of my acting teachers said, you know, we'll get we we'll get bad afterthoughts when we're waiting in the you know audition room. How do you flip it to be what you can use? So I just started thinking, well, oh, they're all laughing because they think they're gonna they think they're gonna take me out. But they're they're wrong. They're laughing. Like I started like making it seem like they were like the bad guys in there and they they were laughing that they got the girl or whatever the case is, but not this time. You know, so I kind of flipped it. The truth is, it's not always easy to, in the middle of a huge, grand spectacle action movie, to like really bring real emotions and honesty and something you can relate to as from a human, you know? And uh, she just nailed it, nailed it to the wall. And uh, it was nothing but a pleasure working with her. She's such a, just a good person smart talented creative person i don't know if you've ever seen you know she she writes and performs one woman shows and things like that and i think she's a star a, a genuine star and i i uh, i can't wait for the world to see more of her joe like i loved watching him because um he he uh he takes it he takes it very serious you know he takes his character and the building and so if it if it doesn't make sense he asks the questions like if my character does this and are we doing this okay Cool. Like, and to me, that's very important because I'm an actor that cares about craft. You know, I want to learn and, and um, no matter what type of movie I'm doing, whether it's an action sci-fi and, you know, maybe grounded in reality or not so much, I still care about the character and what is true to them. So I loved watching him in that, in that aspect and talking to him about just growing pains and learning. And then also, um, we were trying to figure out how our characters became friends. You know, we don't get to see that. So when we had our um, our rehearsal with the directors, I kind of said, Should, um, "Can we improv like scenes that they're not they're not in the movie uh, where they get to know each other?" And he was totally down. He was down to do it, and it was a lot of fun. And we we developed like what I think off screen that kind of like shows in the movie. I hope, but like I feel like. The relationship is solid. You kind of like, maybe you don't know how they became friends, but you know they have a very solid relationship. And I think that's because of the work that we were able to do together um, off screen and that he was open to it, you know? I'm curious, had you worked with Jamie previously? And if not, had you been a fan? He's such a classy guy. I mean, like class is, I think maybe the, that he's kind of the epitome of that. Like he's, he's the person who can talk to, that I, and I, I noticed this, like getting to know him, he can just talk to 
anybody and relate to them and empathize and sort of understand what makes somebody tick and find the humor in that, which is always like kind of relatable and connecting. And um, I just, there's very few people I've met who I've had been more impressed with their ability to just have a immediately engrossing and uh, um, meaningful, but also fun and funny conversation. You sit down and have a conversation with Jamie, it's gonna be a good time. Jamie, what I learned from him, especially on particularly hard days and hard times on set, he's always laughing. He's always making jokes. And that's how he keeps himself grounded and ultimately like keeps everybody else grounded around him and keeps things as light as possible. He's always playing music on set in between and, and keeping it like a like a, a party. Is there a sort of special skill to or a special key to unlocking that balance of playing comedy inside something that is inherent in you? My favorite comedy is is always coming from moments that are just relatable on a human level. There's the opportunity to like just like add a little bit of that's where I think when you say the word chops that I think of is like just having enough practice to be like, yep. And if I time it just a little bit this way, it'll right. make an audience laugh. And you know, I've just, I've had the benefit of experience of like week after week after week, getting up and delivering comedic material in front of an audience and you learn, you just learn what you, you grow instincts about like what it takes to like, if you just, it's there and they'll laugh. And they will. Jamie obviously knows that better than just about anybody alive. This is a this is a guy that's traveled the world and played to such a wide variety of different audiences. And you know, he's played the biggest venues. And then you know, but he he, I remember he he would he was telling me one time about um how he uh, how he likes to go, not maybe likes is the wrong word, but how he goes and does stand up in prisons. And um you know you get there's something universal no matter wh where where you are an audience is going to be an audience and those comedic rules will apply but the more wide a variety of venues you play the more you learn about what it'll take to make an audience laugh and there are like big action movies that have a very kind of dark and somber tone and this isn't one of them i don't think it's, well, I, mean, it's I think i say serious fun. when i think in the moment that it, it, this is happening in the moment that you are emerging into the world with this movie when we're having conversations about police and we're having conversations yeah, yeah. about police, that like this movie actually, there's places that it is fun and it is, you know, actiony and all that stuff, but it intersects with things that we're talking about right now in a way that probably nobody who made the movie was actually expecting it to. In a way they weren't and they were, you know, these are not new issues, the things that we're confronting as our country right now. And I don't need to be the one to say like, that's part of what's so tragic about what's going on right now is that it's not new and it feels like I've I've seen this same thing happen over and over again in my lifetime and it's starting from you know when I was a kid and sort of, of course if you learn about history it goes way further back than that and there hasn't been enough change that's what we're all talking about now in, in a, the black community right like uh, I was I was struggling with the idea of even like promoting this movie right now like how do I talk about this and a lot of my Black, uh, black artist friends said, well, our joy and our success is a part of our resistance, right? So when I, when I think about it, it doesn't feel like I'm um, acting dramatic sometimes or being lighter sometimes. I just feel like it's living. Like that's just been, like that's just life for me. I'm like I'm sad one minute and then the next minute I make I'm making a joke or I'm laughing through my tears and I think that's just uh, that's just life. So I didn't really think about uh, making different differentiating things in that way. I just kind of like let the character and let the words tell me um, where I was. I love big popcorn movies, but I also I love it when a big popcorn movie has a little something to it. I think it it asks questions that are really salient questions, who has the power and why. It is gonna provide the entertainment that I think an audience wants when they turn on this movie. So, and, and riding that balance is, is no small feat to, to be able to entertain your audience. And also just, just like underneath, like ask a few, like a few provocative questions. Do its small part as pop culture does to, you know, um, drive the conversation. Thank <laughs> you.